So Yuli Gurriel has been picked up, and so was Jose Iglesias. They both got signed to minor league deals with Miami. Now, Yuli Gurriel is 38. Last year he hit, let's see, I got 242, eight home runs, 53 RBIs across 146 games. But that doesn't include his clutchness in the playoffs. Right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I wonder, <laughs> it's, it's, it is funny to me, like, the, of all teams, like the Marlins signed him to a minor league deal. <laughs> you know, I, I want to, and I don't know, maybe a contender is going to trade for him because if I'm a playoff team, I want a guy like Yuli Gurriel because he's the Robert Ori in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> if you need a big hit, he's going to get it for you. Right. And veteran presence. Big hit Yuli. That's what we'll start calling him. Big, big, big hit Yuli. Big hit Yuli. Yeah. <laughs> Bad hair, big hits. That's great. <laughs> Iglesias, on the other hand, is 33 years old. He last year. Hit 292, three home runs, 47 RBIs with 30 doubles across 118 games. That's about right. Like we talked to Cole Calhoun for just a couple minutes the other day after spring training, and he's yeah. on a minor league deal. And very similar numbers. I don't think he hit 292 last no, year in I don't Texas. Think so. But it's they're kind of in the same boat, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it, it's fitting. I feel like so. But it's too bad. It is too bad. Because they're just that close. Yeah. Right? It's just that close. And I wonder what separates them. I right, haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe defense. Probably defense. Could be. Okay. Here's the deal. So, Yuli Gurriel was let go by the Astros, which I thought was a little bit shocking. Well, they didn't cut him. They just didn't. I mean. That's what else, I mean. They just yeah, let him go. Yeah, they, right? didn't, they didn't offer him a contract. Right. They let him, they let him walk. Yeah. So yeah, I thought let, let go like it, I think of it in the professional words like I was like oh I'm sorry you got oh yeah no they <laughs> let him walk <laughs> they let him walk away they didn't offer him anything and he now signed to a minor league deal he's 38 and I was like what the heck is happening well then I found this article that explains it and I got really excited about this so here's the information I was able to dig up the Astros general manager Dana Brown is quote uncomfortable with long term deals. And I thought, well, what the heck is a long-term deal? So he says he doesn't like deals that last a any longer than about five years. I mean, <laughs> it's smart, <laughs> I know. right? But it is against the grain right now. You're, pigeon you're, seeing. Your, you're pigeonholing yourself on the free agent market because guys want at least five years, especially guys who are in their late twenties. Because what was the other thing he said about that? He doesn't want them to be more than older than what? Thirty-three. Anything over the age of 33, and he cited analytics specifically, he says there's analytics that show that anybody over the age of 33 starts to drop off hard. Oh, yeah. You know what else tells you that? The freaking eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see, we know, but guys still want that security, the stability of being having a long-term contract to be able to play till they're 38. Right. Even if they're just a DH hitting 290 and 15, 20 home runs. Yeah. Like, they still want that. And, and teams still want that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they want that contribution. And like not everybody's willing to pay for better leadership in the clubhouse. Right. But there's something to be said for having it around and having consistency. Jim Edmonds told us that. Cheers. I agree. Right. And we've thought that for a long time. But limiting guys to age 33 and five year contracts, they're pigeonholing themselves in the free agent market. They're not going to attract big, big names by doing that. Like, Maybe because guys want to play for them, and maybe they just want the younger guys, the younger stars, to come in. But they're not they're not going to compete in the free agent market with that kind of mentality. So here's what kills me: we've been seeing a lot of also a lot of headlines and articles and sound bites coming out of the Astros organization saying that they want to retain their core guys. Right. And I'm like, you can't have it both ways. Exactly right. So I'm yeah. confused, and I wonder, is it Jim Crane or is it Dana Brown? And where where's the problem here? And how does Dusty Baker feel? And we haven't figured that out yet. But here's a couple of details that I was able to scrounge up just for fun, okay? Talk about retaining your core guys and your general manager's just, like, Distaste with anything over five years, anybody past 33. <laughs> Alex Bregman is 29 years old. He hit 259, 23 homers, 93 RBIs, one stolen base across 150, 155 games last year. This is his age 29 season, 2023. So what are you gonna do when he's wanting to test the free agent market at the end of next year? At the end of this year? He'll give you four years. <laughs> 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 when you've got, I don't know, New York, who says, we'll give you 10. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. Exactly. Let's do another one, shall okay. we? Do another one. Okay, on the older side, Jose Altuve. This 2023 is his age 33 season. 
Okay. Last year he hit 300, which is amazing right now. Yes. 28 homers, 57 RBIs, 18 stolen bases across 141 games last year. I mean, he seems like he's as well. <laughs> but he's, <laughs> wants, he's their core guy. He wants I know. to retain it. He said he wanted to retire an Astro. <laughs> yes, he, he lost his cake and he did too. Like, it, I don't know how he's going to get it. That might Maybe he's willing to make an exception for Altuve, which I get. But then like a guy like Kyle Tucker comes along. Let's go to talk Tucker. Tucker. Kyle Tucker turns – here. this is his age 26 season. This 2023 will be. He, last year, he hit 257 with 30 home runs, 107 RBIs, 25 stolen bases across 150 games, and clutch defense. Let's be very clear about that. I am absolutely shocked that uh, – that I, I should say I will be absolutely shocked if the Astros do not find a way to extend him. So, you, so he'll, he's getting to his first year of arbitration. Uh, or I think he just hit it. Oh, yeah, that's right. He just had his first he year. Just had it. We talked about that yeah. because he got he got he got screwed. Yeah, but um, but so like, what's going to happen with Kyle Tucker in a couple of years? He's going to be know. he's going to have free agency in twenty twenty six, so he'll be twenty nine. Twenty nine. Like they just gave Jose Altuve, you know, just a couple of years before. I'm assuming this is what's going to happen. Hopefully. They're going to give him a long a, a contract to, to retire, retire. In Astro, but mm-hmm. then Kyle Tucker comes along and says, "Well, I would like." I'd like seven years so I can retire now. So, sorry, we don't like you that much. We don't do that. <laughs> sorry. Go peace, away. Peace out, suckers. Yeah. Go somewhere else and I'll beat you. Right. So let's talk about um, Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez, this is his 26th year as well, his age 26 year. Last year, he hit 306, 37 home runs, 97 RBIs, and one stolen base across 135 games. And uh, he's going to be in the same situation. And he's a problem at the plate, and he's he's just not a guy you want to let go. You don't want to let him walk. Right. So he's going to be a free agent his, uh, when he's 32. <laughs> like, how do you solve that? Like, you come out and you say this. Like, I don't – you're causing problems for yourself. You're you're causing division and – like Potentially. Yeah. I don't know. It's strange that he would say something like that and make it public rather than having it be like an in-house policy. Right. That this is how we structure our contracts. But like saying it open like that, just because. Well, what kills me is that over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about the Astros and there's been some social media criticism about how we've gone about it. Right. But this is evidence of the messaging that the public is getting. And if this is how we're feeling, you got to wonder what's going on inside the clubhouse and from the front office down. How is that culture being shaped? Who is doing the messaging and how is it being received? And what are these guys going to feel when their agents approach them and say, you know, this is what the Dodgers are saying. Right. But this is what the Astros are saying. And they're not yeah. going to add up. They just aren't. And, you know, maybe it's not a stability thing. Maybe it is strictly dollars and cents because maybe. they were – because the Astros were never going to give Justin Verlander what he wanted. They were no. never going to give Garrett Cole what he wanted. But Garrett Cole had already put his Astro stuff in a duffel bag yeah. when they lost the World Series. Like, he, he peaked was, anyway. <laughs> he did <didn't> peak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he was, he was out the door before like yeah. before he was physically out the door, oh, yeah. you know? He quiet quit. Yeah, he did. So, <laughs> I don't know. On the outside looking at it, it feels like there's more to it, and this does not seem like it's helping. Yeah. 